Good. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Quick Sticks. We got a double episode for you guys this week. Uh, today, we're joined by a very special guest, Mr. Mark McNeil with the Archers. Mark, how's it going, man? Hey, doing well, doing well. How you doing? How's everyone? I'm doing good, doing good, good, man. We appreciate you uh, taking some time with us. Um, so for those listeners who might not know a lot about you, give us some background. Tell us where you're from, how you got into lacrosse, all that. Yeah, so my name's Mark McNeil from Annapolis, Maryland. Oh, man, I've been playing lacrosse uh, ever since I can remember, probably like five years old. Um, wow. But that's just the thing to do in Annapolis. Uh, so my brothers played, my cousins played, my neighbors played. And, uh, you know, whenever they needed an extra, an extra body, I was, I was the one. So I've uh, been playing for a while. But anyway... Uh, from Annapolis, Maryland, went to uh, St. Mary's High School, um, played in my double A. Um, so I was, you know, awesome playing, in, you know, playing in Baltimore, played with, uh, with and against a lot of guys I looked up to growing up. So that was awesome. And then uh, later on, had the opportunity to play uh, football lacrosse at Carolina. And then um, after Carolina, got drafted to the MLL and just been playing pro lacrosse ever since and currently on the Archers. So, um, yeah, it's kind of my, my brief. Nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, you mentioned you played uh, football at UNC, and I was just curious um, to learn a little bit about how it helped you prepare for lacrosse in the pros. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think football and lacrosse go hand in hand. I think they go perfectly together. One's in the fall, one's in the spring. Um, so, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have – there wasn't really many conflicts. Um, but with football, I think it helped out tremendously because it's kind of just like working on a, a, a different skill set. Uh, for example, as, as a receiver, um, I, I feel like the footwork aspect and also just the, the strength and conditioning program that we were on, I think it pairs well with being a midi or, or, or a D, a D midi. Um, so yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I had a great time doing it and I think it helped out tremendously. That's awesome. So kind of still on that point, was there ever a time when you were in high school that you were actually going to pursue football further as far as going pro? I know you played in college as well, or, you know, were you always going to stick to lacrosse? Uh, yeah, it was always lacrosse. Uh, okay. Lacrosse since I can remember six years old. No like, way. Watching the national championships and the beautiful thing about uh, being from Maryland or Annapolis is, you know, the quarterfinals at the Naval Academy – or the national championships at m and Bank. Like those are, I don't know, those are, those are what I dreamed to do to growing up. So for me, football was like never even an option. Uh, it's actually funny. Um, in high school, my freshman year, I was all across. I was like, I don't want to play football. And, you know, my parents made me play, right? Um, yeah. Again, my senior year, I'm like, you know, it's my senior year of high school. Like, you know, I want to win a championship. Like football's holding me back from doing that. Sure. Um, they made me play. So, but, you know, it, it worked out. But just to say that there was never a question that I wasn't playing college across. And actually, I always wanted and uh, envisioned myself going to Hopkins and just watching, say, Kyle Harris and Paul Rabel. Um, yeah, that was always the dream. So, wow. That. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That, was a great, that was a great answer. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. Um, so we want to fast forward to this year. So, you know, it's been – hell of a season so far so how was training camp we like to ask just because we've noticed that it sounds like some coaches take training camp almost like militaristic style other teams are more relaxed how's training camp for you guys uh what's what's the the energy I, like? I thought we had a good balance um I thought training camp was a good experience I thought I thought we got after it uh, I don't think it was, you know, we weren't getting after it. We had two days, so we weren't getting after it four hours a day, you know. But uh, it was a nice mix of kind of resting and preparing your body as well as, like, figuring out your roster. And, you know, that, that, that's the most important thing, right? Uh, figure out who's going to play on game day. So, yeah, training camp is all, it's such an interesting experience because it's into the first week, right? So you got to toe the line. You got to, you know, and – and so I feel like maybe the, the coaches who were, you know, really militaristic or maybe the coaches who were maybe too relaxed, uh, that may have been a, a, you know, a detriment. But I felt like we did a good job of, again, just competing as well as being cognizant on, you know, the weekend coming up. Mm -hmm. 
That's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. So what is it like then guarding guys like Tom Shriver who practice every day? What's that like? It's uh it's an experience. It uh, can't be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a setup question. You said what? I said it's kind of a setup question. I yeah, know it's not, yeah. I know it's not easy, but I just want to know like, what's it, what's it like? What's it like? I know it's I know I know it's tough. It's 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 almost like a losing battle, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially especially with the shorty. You know, it's like okay, like what do I force him? Do I force him you know, right-handed or left-handed? Like you know, if I if I'm if I'm on his back going down the alley, he's still gonna do something. Still gonna pull it. Yeah. <laughs> this is not enough. Not enough stick to play him. But yeah. uh, but I really do think playing guys like that in practice, and you know, especially our offense, it's really high power. I think that really contributes uh, to the success um, that we've had in the past, and you know, to the success I imagine we will continue to have to have this year. So you know, iron sharpens iron. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Go ahead, Sam. Sure. Um, and so another question, yeah, is, uh, you know, as the league grows, uh, you know, teams continue to add talent from the already, you know, stacked player pool that there is, um, you know, how do you adjust your game to you know, match, match those talents? Man, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. I think I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> one, thing I've, I've, one thing I've really have noticed, you know, the talent, increases every single year and you know I'm not getting any younger but rookies are staying the same age so what, <laughs> sure. what I feel like uh, sure. that I have to really focus on is just my body I feel like I have to spend a lot more time say like recovering or you know conditioning strength just like things with keeping my body up but on the field I just I think I, I think I have to play a little bit more like cerebral like I can't do things uh, that I once had, well, that I once could, I couldn't get away with those things. So I feel like I'm more cognizant, like, you know, like more so trying to pay attention to body position or thinking ahead or just really just trying to leave it all on the field, like the effort plays. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say those are, are, are kind of the biggest things, just like the effort and hustle and just trying to think ahead more. Wow. Love uh, that. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So um, I, I actually was at d Midi as well. Um, so this question is, I'm really curious your answer. Do you think defensive midfielders are more valuable in the PLL than they were at the college level? Oh, yes, of course. I, I really do. Um, you know, at college, the teams are really incredible and players are really good. But, you know, in the PLL, like all six guys, for the most, all six guys are incredible. And for the most part, are all have the ability to dodge or who were once great dodgers in college. So, um, yeah, being, you know, being a D midi, and especially we see a lot of like, you know, a lot of pick play two man game, like you just have to be able to, if not for, you know, not the whole possession, but at times being able to cover almost anybody on the field. Yeah. So, and, 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 you know, oftentimes a D midi may be put in a position where you can't really get a slide there. So, you know, in times like that, you know, if you have, if you have strong D middies that, you know, don't, you know, Dodgers don't necessarily always draw sides on. It helps you out a lot. And, you know, I haven't looked at it, but, like, I imagine the teams who've had a lot of success in the PLL um, in the past. And this year, I imagine they probably have strong defensive midfielders. Yeah, 100%. That, that's, that's what we're seeing as well. So, no, good, great answer. Go ahead, Matt. Um, so, yeah, I want to ask. So, this is your fourth year with the Archers, right? Mm -hmm. So, looking back from your first year to now, how has how has the entire team as a unit kind of developed from where they were four years ago? Oh man, you got me. You got me thinking. Um, <laughs> so I think we we only have nine of our original members. Oh, damn, uh, really? From the first year. So just looking at that, like we have changed uh, a tremendous amount. Um, I think of you know, I think of the bubble. Right, we get. Grant Amen. And that's just that transformed our offense, you know, tremendously. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I, I think, yeah, just look at things like that and the defensemen that we've added and just like, yeah, like, you know, we have a different face off guy. We just have added so many different things. So we're definitely a new identity. But I still think like our core kind of mentality uh, is, is, is still there.
You know, I, I yeah. think we, uh, from the beginning, we've always harped on like being a really solid defensive unit and like communication and all that good stuff. And I think that's something that we still continue to do. Um, and offensively, you know, even with, the, you know, even before Grant, we've always been a team that focused on ball movement and unselfishness. And I think, you know, we continue to do so. Um, but, you know, the additions that we add, like, you know, for, for example, Grant, like, yeah, it just makes it us that much better. Or, you know, I, I think of uh, some of the guys that we've added on the, on the defense, like Graham, right? Um, you know, he's been such a huge addition, um, but it's still like the core kind of mentality and still thought. Yeah. yeah. That's funny you say yeah. that because that's, that's kind of something like we were talking about on our last episode because um, we had Coach Brooks from the Atlas on a few weeks ago and he was saying like, you know, their mantra with their offense is family style. We want everyone to get a touch, everyone eats. And we were like, Atlas obviously is on fire right now offensively. You guys look great this past week offensively. Oh, yeah. But then we were like looking at a team like the Redwoods where ball movement's not as big of a priority as like one man physicality. So I was like, I feel like we're going to see the offenses that aren't too big on ball movement try and like translate to that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, defenders yeah. are too good, man. You know, defenders are, are that good. I got I to gotta jump a question here that we've asked everybody, but I want to know from a defensive mini standpoint, what has taken out 10 yards in the middle of the field and that two-point arc meant for you guys in transition? Yeah, in true. Oh, man. Yeah, it's really – so it obviously contributes to uh, to fast breaks and early offense transition opportunities. I think you see more of that because of the uh, the smaller field. But from a you know just from a strictly defensive standpoint, um, you just have to be out on your defender way more. You know, taking away that ten yards, you you had a little bit more of a cushion, right? But it seems mm -hmm. like now the ball starts lower and lower, dodges start lower and lower, and if you're not, you know on someone's hands that, you know, yeah, really, like, you want to be on – if you're not at someone's hands, like, you know, 20 yards, it kind of feels like you're almost too late where I feel like that extra that's five right. yards you may have. Dude, that's uh, so far. That's so <laughs> wild. That's such a different 20 sport. yards. <laughs> I know, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, what, that's what Jake Pulver said. He said, if, you know, Romar Dennis out of a split at 17, that's a good shot. Like oh, that's a, you know, yeah. that's a really good shot. Wow. If Omar beats you, if he beats you at 14, or, you know, beat, no, if he beats you at 16, right? Like, yep. he's coming out of that dodge, and that's a two-point goal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's crazy. It's seeing it in person was different. We were all in Charlotte this last weekend. Yeah. And seeing all of it, I mean, seeing Tom's sidearm passes, seeing, you know, Romar Dennis's jump shot, it's just different when you're there. It's so much faster. It's crazy. And Sam, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to jump ahead of you, because, the one of the highlights of the weekend was seeing oh, need to talk about this. <laughs> open field hit on Westberg. That was incredible. I, I need you to talk to Gittleman and tell him we need more of those hits from him All this of season. Them. All of them. That yeah. shit had the stadium erupting. Yeah, we, we, we lost it. That was awesome. Yeah, you know, he comes out of the cage quite a bit. And, you know, that's not the first time. I mean, that was a huge hit. But he's gotten physical in previous years. And that's one of the <laughs> I love that. so valuable. He's yeah. an athlete great athlete. yeah he, he really is every time he comes out of the cage people are surprised but i'm pretty sure i read that he played like running back in high school or he yeah, at least played yeah. some football so, back in high school yeah so he hits someone with a spin to everyone's like oh that's the goalie i'm like no that's a running back that's a, that's a very good <laughs> athlete out there so that's uh exactly. that's cool that's really cool man that's cool um sam go ahead yeah um so we, we're very curious about how you guys prep for games um, during during the course of the week. I think you mentioned you have film after this, but um, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, what prep is like for upcoming match against uh, Cannons um, and just in general what it's like? Yeah, so um, I think it's kind of in two parts. Uh, you kind of got to prep physically, you know, maybe rehab or kind of take care of some aches and pains uh, from the previous week, but also – you know, kind of, you know, prepare your body for what's coming up. But uh, one of the things that we do, you know, we really focus on film and the scout. Um, so each week, one of our homework chores is to, uh, is to kind of write, is to write up a little, write up uh, a brief summary of, of what went wrong on each goal. So like every goal that we have, everyone individually needs to, needs to, kind of yeah it needs to say what happened right um and that 
it's a lot of accountability and it makes you watch film in like a different way. Like, yeah, I watch all the games, but you know, if I have to go through and figure out like why we allowed this goal, you look at it a lot differently. And, you know, to be, to be quite honest, like, man, like, you know, watching film of yourself, give up a goal. It definitely like kind of puts a fire in you or definitely like, man, like, I don't want I don't want to, I don't want to have to explain this. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then um, yeah. on the flip side of that, we, we have to do the same thing for, um, for the team we're playing in the upcoming week, their, their previous goals. So, you know, um, we had to watch the Cannons last game and we had to write up how they scored a goal. Um, again, there's no, like, I don't, I don't, not giving away any secrets, but. Yeah, of course, of course. Watch the ball film and just like accountability. Right. And I think that's, I think that's the biggest thing because, um, the PLO is a lot more competitive and it, and it seems like it's a lot more serious and the things that you probably could have gotten away with, you know, before you really can't because the players are getting better. People are investing more time in it. Like the town is only getting better. You got to do something. So that's really wow. a, a typical prep week just to watch the film and like, you know, figure out dominant hands and tendencies and discuss that with your unit. Wow, Damn. that's that's nuts. So I, I got I got to throw a question after hearing you talk like that. Did you ever think when you were playing in high school, you're playing club for the crabs, that there would be a professional league like this? No, I, no chance. <laughs> like zero. Like nothing. Okay. Well, wow. I would dream about it as a kid, but like <laughs> I, I really would. But like you know, growing up, I was the biggest lax rat. But and to be honest, I wasn't really involved or cared in the, about the professional league at the time. You know, sure. yeah. uh, it was all it was all college. But you know, growing up, it's it seems that more and more kids are paying attention to that. And I think I'm in Texas, San Antonio, so there's really not the program, the college programs around. Like you can't just drive 30 minutes and see, you know, Navy, Loyola, Hopkins, Maryland, like UMBC, Towson, all those games within 30 minutes. All those programs from you know where I grew up. But you know, you don't have that down here. So it seems that like you know, kids have really attached you know, attach on, grabbed on to the, to the PLL. And it's, yeah. in my opinion, it's been really surprising um, how many, how many kids seem to be really, um, to really like it. Yeah, that's true. I, I always tell these guys, I went to D, I went to the DC matchups last year and I heard three kids arguing about who's the best attackman. And I mean, it felt like a LeBron Michael argument. I mean, they were yelling at each other and they had, you know, they had, you know, good, good cases for everybody. But I was like, I never really thought, It'd be a guy wearing a, you know, a Matt Rambo jersey yelling at another kid, just like, no, like, he's the best. He's the best. So I was like, this is good for the league. This is, this is, this is really good to have this. So that was a good answer. That's cool. And, and it, one thing I, I think of, again, I'm a, I'm a huge lasher. I love the sport. But, like, I think, like, just imagine if there was – if the PLO were around, if it were this serious, you know, back when I was growing up, like, like looking at all the great players that I saw play in college and then – Back then, right, like after your tremendous college career, like that was pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. Kyle Dixon's the Powell's. Yeah. Exactly, those studs yeah. growing up. And, yeah, just would, you know, would be incredible. That's cool. Mm. That, 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 would, that would have been cool. I, I grew up watching uh, Chaz Woodson's highlight tapes before games. Just yeah. to get me excited. Now, I never jumped over the goal or anything, but I would, I would still. He would, he, would, <laughs> he, would, he would motivate me. I love his highlight jokes. I'll go ahead, Matt. Yeah. yeah, I love Chaz. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, all right, so we did want to switch to what we call, like, our lightning round segment. So um, some of these will be lacrosse-related, some won't. So I'll kick us off. Um, so what's one way you spend your free time when you're not playing lacrosse? Oh, uh, my free time not playing lacrosse. Um just like kind of hanging out. I'm a big walker. I like walking. So oh, nice. Nice. Time, I'll just, you know, throw on the headphones and walk. <laughs> I love <Okay>. that. <laughs> I like, I like that. Um, I, I'm going to add one in there just because you said that uh, music wise, what do you listen to? I'm a big EDM guy. Yeah. I no really? way. Yeah. What? Wow. Dude. What, what genre? What are you, you into? Know, I was in school in college from like 2014, uh, 10 to 14. Like that's, that's like, true. That was yeah, like, that's, it's, fine. It's, that's us. That's us. Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your go-to? Yeah. Oh, sure. my, DJ. oh man. My go-to. I don't know. I mean, I like was, a, obviously I was like a huge Avicii fan, but like, 
you know, I'll just well, with Spotify, I'll just put on like a, a playlist and just let it ride. Wow. So, okay, one, you're talking to huge, like three huge EDM fans. We actually went to Tomorrowland together in 2019. Oh, let's go. It yeah. was, dude, I, we awesome. could have a whole podcast about that. Yeah, we, we'd have to have another hour. For yeah, that. we, uh, <laughs> wow, the fact you like EDM is amazing. We're big EDM people too. Um, all right, so city or venue you're most looking forward to playing this season? I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to playing in Washington. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think for me, that's like kind of the most surprising or I guess the, yeah, I don't know. I think of, I think of that as like really, you get to see the game has really grown. Yeah. Sure. So that, that's wow. what I would say. Yeah. That's a, that's a good, that's a good answer. Go ahead, Sam. Um, all right. Um, if you could go pro in one sport other than lacrosse, which would, what would it be? I'm going to say so- Soccer. Wow. Damn. Soccer. Wow. Damn. Good answer. Soccer. Take that yeah, soccer I mean, money. It's, it's known all throughout the world and you can, you can play a long time and I don't know. It just mm. seems, I've never played growing up, but it's just one of those things like, dang, I wish I played. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah played some I like that. Oh that's, yeah. That's cool. FIFA, definitely. Yeah. So if you could redo the archers uniforms, what two colors would you pick? Hmm. Okay. Because the orange yeah. and blue is fire, but orange and blue is sick. We love it. I don't it. know if that's, that's your favorite. Curious though. I, in my mind, I, I see, I see like a a black and gold. Oh, oh damn! Maybe that would be like crazy. A, yeah, I, I see that. That's what I see. I, the I golden knights, little Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the golden knights. I like that. Damn, wow, that, would like be, that. that would be tight. That actually would be fire. All right, so I'm going to throw in one more question because you said something about FIFA. What was, like, your uh, video game growing up? What was, your, what was your coach? Were you a gamer guy at all? Yeah, I was a uh, massive in Halo. I was, uh, <laughs> Halo. Oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Love Halo. <laughs> That's my bread and butter. My, my KD was well over one. I'll say that. Oh, boy. All <laughs> right, amazing. I'm logging off. I'll let you and James I was, talk. I was going to say, <laughs> I, 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 guys, no, I was a huge Halo guy. I loved Halo. I, oh, man. That's a that's nice snipes lockout. Shotty snipes on Oh, yeah, the shotty <laughs> Tower of Power on Ascension. That was my childhood, man. That's incredible. Okay, so what uh, what TV show are you binging right now? I just um, – I'm watching Obi-Wan, so I'm not – I'm not a huge – like, I'm not a huge TV guy. Okay. And um, so – but I started watching The Mandalorian, uh, and I binged through that, and then I hit Boba Fett, and now I'm on Obi-Wan, so the Star Wars <clears> – <throat> Uh, uh, shows are, are what have been would have been. Wow, uh, yeah. that's that's really good. I haven't watched the news episode yet. Matt said it's really good. I'm gonna watch it after we get off. So, I'm uh, I'm, I'm on that. It's it's that's the awesome. best of the season so far. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. It's been okay. great. I'll, yeah, that's awesome. Um, Go ahead, Sam. Oh, we'll a really sorry, but a really underrated show, Wheel of Time, the best show I've seen in a while. I love it, dude. Yeah, Sam got me, Sam got me into the books. The show yeah, was fantastic, be- though. Um, all right. Uh, favorite TV show from the nineties. Favorite t- TV show from the nineties. Wow. Okay, man. I used to be a, a big, like, Hey Arnold fan. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Fantastic. Yeah. It's a strong answer. We were very, very curious strong. which one you were going to say. Yeah. What, what, are, what, are, your, uh, what are your thoughts? What, what do you think? Yeah. What, yeah. What, what would we say? I mean, I, I honestly I mean, huge rocket power. I'm I was going to say it. I love, I love Rocket Power. I, I love Rocket Power. You know what, Matt? I just realized you didn't ask him the state question. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, let's hit him with it. Go ahead. So, all right, this is something we ask all of our guests. So, if you put eight seconds on the clock, we want to hear your top three steakhouse side dishes. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to go potato wedges or fries. Whoa. And then I'm going to go mac and cheese. And I'm going to go. Onion rings. Third. Oh, there you go. oh wow. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a, a hell of a answer. plate there. Yeah. That is a very <laughs> strong answer. Wow. I love that. Wow. We asked, uh, oh, Max Wayne was our last guest, and he went, like, straight green. So I love that. You just went wow. straight for the carbs. Yeah, I was yeah, really right. Wow. That was cool. Um, so, all right, last lightning round question we got. I do want to know, hardest person you've ever had to guard, either in the PLL or college? Or how about this? Let's do one in college and one in the PLL. How about that? Oh, there you go. Yeah, let's do that. 
You know what? I, I would say in college, like a, I think a guy like Jordan Wolf, man, he was always ooh, damn. That's true. So fast. He, so fast. Athlete. He's like he has an incredible first step. I, you know. So I would. Oh wow! But you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to say him or probably like a I, – I mean, I, I played against the Brattons the first year, so I think of like – Yeah, did you? Oh, did God. you really? Like freshman year, yeah, we the Brattons were still there. So, I, I got to like yeah, – oh. Dude, Dude, I did not know Chimel, that. Chamel, I probably had you on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's incredible. So, I wow. remember I, I shadowed with them at, uh, at Virginia on my visit, and then – like Chamel just like ran through our defense and scored, or it was a Ramel ran through our defense and scored. It was like, oh, you should have come here. I don't know. I just like, one of oh, the- no. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I do. <laughs> because we could never hear them talking, but after they score goals, you'd see their helmet moving and you knew they were talking. We could never know. Dude, you know what they're saying? Goal. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's a good answer. All right. So, what about PLL? I'm just PLL. I'm going to say. It's maybe an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna say a, a Rabel in his prime. Like, really? Wow. Because I think like similar to like a a Romar. Or you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a combo like a Romar, like Rabel, one of those two. But like because they were fast and big, right? And then had the ability to pull it from pretty far out. So like they're fat, yeah, just big, fast, and have like great shooting ability. Um, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, wow. yeah. It's, it, I, you know, I think of like uh, in recent years, man. Like, yeah, I think of like you know, Romar definitely getting the best of me and some dodges, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, because some of Rabel's game winners are all the way out on the wing, and he had all that whip that he could pull it across, you know, like he was just right. Like, crazy. I'm thinking, like, how many dudes, yeah, are, are pulling it from 15, like outside the hash, like, dude, yeah, outside, outside the hash. <laughs> <laughs> Especially as a shorty, it's only so much, you know, you can yeah, do down right. the alley. That's crazy. Man, those are just a really good answer. That's awesome. Because I, I obviously, I mean, we've watched Shamel Ramel. I mean, you know, that was so much fun. I mean, we still, games. I still go back and watch that I still watch that highlight. It's so fun yeah. to watch. I mean, they're amazing. I mean, they're incredible. The, the wildest thing to me is, like, talking to, like, the younger guys or, you know, because I coach high school and stuff, but, like, talking to the, talking to the younger players, like, they just don't know of – say like the Mikey Powell's or like the Kyle Dixon's or like, you know, they don't know, like, you know, a, a young Kyle Harrison, like just all those kind of greats that we watched growing up. Uh, like yeah. Matt Russell. I don't know. They, they don't, those, they don't know. Like, it's like, That's Oh, like true. how was, uh, I, I remember I was talking to one of the rookies and I'm like, Oh yeah. Like Ben Ruby or like, how was he back in the day? I'm like, cool. Like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like what? Wait, was he really? No way. Damn. I haven't, I haven't seen this tape. I'd love to watch that. That'd be interesting. Oh, yeah, man. Like, he yeah, was a dog. Rube's at Virginia. I am think it was like – because there was like three attack men. It was him and then like – I remember Matt Ward. They were all different times. And then there was uh, – uh, who was the third? I forget. But, yeah, just like, again, like a long history of, of just like great UVA attack men. That's Damn. incredible. Wow. I'll have to go a, watch Rubes yeah, if I can find it. Because Coach Brooks was talking about playing with the pal, you know, his freshman year. He had some good stories about yeah. you know, how good they were. But I, I wish we had that much tape, you know, oh, just, to, just to show everybody what they used to do. So, exactly. wow. That was really good. That was really good. Damn. Damn man. Um, yeah, no, that's all we got for you, man. So we appreciate the time. Um, thanks again for joining us. We did want to say best of luck to you the rest of the season. Yeah, good luck this weekend, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was this was such a such a blast. I don't know. I'm a lax rat, so any any time just to talk. I was lax. gonna say, man, we've got returning guests, so we'll we'll have you back say, on. If you want to come back on during the season, let us know. We're gonna be definitely the DC weekend. We'll be there, and then okay. Sam and I are gonna try to come to Homewood because uh, we've never been to Homewood, especially with the new stadium. So we'll be there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a historic venue. That's Absolutely awesome. cool. We'll hit you up over there, man. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. Really, appreciate oh, dude. It. Absolutely, bro.